Welcome to Play to Win, where we play to win. I'm Dylan. And I'm Cameron. This week we're showcasing the game that we played with Chris and Sean of the Mystic Remoras. So first up we have me on Ikrachrom Green Grixis. Chris is on Ilharg. Sean is on Thrasios Rograk Midrange. And Cameron is on Kenrith KFC. <laughs> Draw cards. Shock in a Water Grave. I'll go to 38. I'll play a Mana Crypt. Cast a Time Twister. All right, I have no more things that I'm doing. I'm passing my turn after that. Didn't we just have a game like this that started off on a turn one wheel? I did a turn one wheel not long ago. How did that end? That worked out great. Okay, good, good. <laughs> What's up? Upkeep, draw. Sandstone Needle, Mox Opal. I'm gonna pass. I'll go ahead and draw. We'll get shocked. Paradise Mantel. Rograk. Oh, Finn Horn Elves. Go sense. ahead. Drop Mana Vault and then pass. Odds I take damage. Draw a card. Fire of Industry. Cast Rhystic Study. Pass my turn. Tap. <laughs> I'm keep draw. Play this Inventor's Fair. I'm gonna pay two red mana for a Felwar Stone. Rhystic Study trigger. You can draw. Nice. Curse Totem. Rhystic Study. Can I tap my Mox Opal for it? <laughs> That's the end of my turn. Draw. Stone. First six day? Uh huh. That's it. I'll draw. We're gonna play a Badlands for turn. I'm gonna pass. Go to me. Mana Crypt. Odds. I take damage. Draw a card. Flooded Strand. Cast a Wish Claw Talisman. Float a colorless mana. I'm just gonna let it chill for now though. And I will pass my turn, move to discard, card and catacomb. Untap, upkeep, inventor's fair, gain a life, up to 41. Draw, play a mountain, cast Illarg. I'll pay 30. one for it, and I'll end my turn. Untap, upkeep, draw, city of brass, dockside. Risk 6 study trigger. Paying for it. I have three. I have three. I have one. Seven. Seven it is. I would also like a Ristic study. Can I draw a card? How am I gonna, how am I gonna get no. cast spells? <laughs> I'm done oh. casting spells. It's all Illarg from here on out. That sounds about right. <laughs> I'm going to pass after that. Alrighty, here we go. Draw for turn. Raining center. Realized I should have been swinging with my Finhorn. I blew it. Unbelievable. You should have been swinging with Rograk. No one can block it. Pass. All right, let's see if you have an opposition agent. I'll fetch the flooded strand. Go to 34. It's not enough value for me to opposition agent when you have a freaking uh, <laughs> wish claw talisman in play. A volcanic island here. But he wouldn't be able to wish claw then, right? Because he can't do it in response to your op as a shit agent. That's true, but I wouldn't do it if there was an op agent. If there's not an op agent, I might do it. I might call him on that bluff. Right, at least this would force him to, you know, if he does activate it, then I can op agent him then, I and then it. I can just do anything. Sure. Yep. Yeah, no, that's a good point. I'm gonna get Steam Vince tap. Go to my turn. Mana Crypt. Evens, no damage. Draw a card. Play a Volcanic Island. I'll lose a life from the Spire. Go to 33. Cast Veil of Summer. Bum bum bum. Rhystic Study. Impending. You may draw. I mean, because you're obviously going for it, I've got to try and stop it. Lose a life. I should be at like 37 right now. This is just ridiculous <laughs> cheating. Dispel. Okay, yeah, sure. You got it. I'm just switching gears here. One, two, three, four, five. I'll cast Chrom. Rhystic. You can draw. Cam, I'll attack you for four with Chrom. I will happily go down to 36. And pass turn. I'm so close to getting to play Death Shadow, Kenneth. <laughs> On tap, draw. Land for turn. Combat. Dylan, gonna come at you with Illarg. Illarg trigger. Yeah, let's see what you got. It's a Godo. <laughs> oh, Jesus oh, Christ. <laughs> oh, wait, just that? You can do this mid combat, these shenanigans, right? Or no? Do you have to. No, no. <laughs> You can't, oh, yeah, you can't just, equipment this. Right I'm gonna have two Illargs next turn. Great. <laughs> Helm of the Host, I'm at, pretty sure is actually the only equipment I have in here. <laughs> so in my second main phase, I'm gonna pay five mana and equip it to Illarg. That's the end of my turn. Godo goes back to my hand at the end of turn. Untap, upkeep, and draw. Shock and a steam vents go down to 35. Imperial Recruiter. We're six stature. See, that's the part I was kind of going like, ooh. <laughs> Go ahead. Grabbing Kinnon. Casting Kinnon. For six day. I will pay for it. We're going to go combat. Swing at Dylan for two whole damage. 22. Neat. I'm impacting the game. Pass. It's more than I can say. That, uh, that turn one time twister was not really kind to me. Everything's been a major disappointment. Um, we're going to, we're going to actually cast a spell this turn. It's going to be Spell Seeker. I'm going to use uh, the, my extra two mana here to pay for both of the Rhystic Studies. A five cost Spell Seeker. Seems fair. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's it's a very fair magic card at this point. <laughs> We're getting a swan song. 
pass the turn. Is Swan Song just to like hold up interaction to try to make sure you can live a couple more turns? Yeah, totally. I am so far out of this game. There are two Ristic studies here. Who knows what's gonna happen? Not me. Oh, I know what's gonna happen is I'm gonna lose. <laughs> uh, damage. No damage there. Draw the card. Job. Cast a mana vault. Ristic. I will pay for it. Neat. I'm gonna start accepting cash instead of Ristic study payments. <laughs> <laughs> I'll hang back. I will just pass my turn. Untap. Upkeep. Gain a life with Inventor's Fair. Draw a card. Play a mountain. I'm gonna go to combat. Make a copy of Illarg. Attacks. We're gonna send two Illargs at Dylan. We're gonna have two Illarg triggers. We're gonna put a Goto into play, tapped and attacking. And we're gonna put a Combustible Gear Hulk into play, tapped and attacking. We're gonna have Goto go at Cameron and Combustible Gear Hulk go at Sean, but Combustible Gear Hulk is going to target Dylan. So what has to happen? <laughs> uh, so Dylan, do you want me to draw three cards? Or if you don't, I mill the top three cards of my library and you take damage equal to the converted mana cost of the total of those cards. Yeah, I'll do the damage thing, I guess. It's probably okay. irresponsible to give you three cards, unfortunately. Yeah, probably. <laughs> mill, lightning bolt, senseis, vandal blast. You take three. Wow. <laughs> that is beautiful. One drop. 12 and 12, then 3 said? at cam. Alright, I got effects before damage. Overload Cyclonic Rift. Ristic study. Yeah, you can draw. Neat. I'm actually fine with that. This, this is great. Yeah, that's pretty good for you, Cameron. <laughs> you just get to reuse your spell seeker and untap your mana vault. I'll crack two treasures for four blue. Rift? Good. Looks like it. Yeah. Wow. Alright. I'm gonna cast a Felwar Stone. Ristic study? I'm paying. Mox Opal? Chrome Ristic. I'll pay for the Ristic. I draw a Chrome. And I end with seven cards in the end. Cyclonic Rift Overloaded is backbreaking, and we were all fools for taking it out of our decks for Window of Rebuke. I cannot state this any stronger. I am a firm believer in this. Yes, I know the synergies with bounce spells that can bounce your own dockside are very high, but the synergies of bouncing all of your opponent's permanents to their hand is really just so much better, I think. And especially when you have a Ristic study in play already, especially with Krom. So now I bounced all their stuff to their hand. Now they have to recast all that shit. So I'm just gonna draw a whole grip full of more cards. God, I love this deck so much, sorry. Untap, upkeep, I'm gonna draw. Gonna drink while you do your turn. Not F6. Sounds great. That's totally F6. All right, so Gaia's Cradle. Nice, love that. All right, I'm gonna go Rog Rack. Oh, Can sorry, it? Ristic study. I'm yeah, you're good. Chrom and Ristic study. Uh-huh. Two green for red. Dockside. Ristic study. That one I'm gonna pay. Lose a life. You got six treasures. What a responsible magic player you are, Kim. You know it. I'm not not feeding Ristic studies, not contributing to these dock sides. Metamor stone. With one treasure. Ristic? Yep. We're gonna crack two treasures. It's gonna be all blue, down to three treasures remaining. Cast a Ristic study. Sure. Paying for it with the floating. Two additional treasures, down to one treasure remaining. All of them red. Wheel of Fortune. You can go ahead and have that one. I've got one red floating. And now I might as well, I'm gonna just show you. If uh, you didn't Cyclonic Rift on my last turn, I was gonna Wheel of Fortune with like my big dudes in play so I could get seven new cards and retain my fucking creatures. Good God. That was pretty good. Gemstone Mine, Growth Spiral, Talisman of Dominance, Abrupt Decay, Windfall, Flusterstorm, Gamble, Final Fortune, Underworld Breach, Mystical Tutor, Mana Drain, Soul Ring. You are fully aware of pretty much everything. Oh, of everything. <laughs> that I am discarding. Um, Paradise Mantle, Finhorn, Imperial Recruiter, Lord Dracus, Elvish Mystic. Run Tomb, Spellseeker, Mana Vault, Savine's Reclamation, Enlightened Tutor, Bloom Tender of Swat, and uh, Swan Song. Did you notice how many white cards I named that were in my hand? <laughs> That's like the extent of all of the white cards that are in my deck. Except silence. I was like the only one. What, what the fuck? Yeah, you really did not get the uh, the best luck with this game. It seems like your draws just were not where you wanted them to be. It happens. I'll get the best luck on some other game. Look at this bullshit. Mox Diamond. Pitching a breeding pool. Float a blue, float a green. Let's get a Thrasios into the battlefield. Mystic study. I'll use the red that was floating. And let's crack this last treasure. And the two floating. Activate. Thrasios, revealing Cloudstone Curio. Pass. Draw for turn. Let's cast a Mox Diamond. Ristic Study. Uh, I will Ristic pay study. one. Pay two. Discarding Breeding Pool. Copycat. And a Felwar Stone that you have to discard a land. Yeah, well, don't worry. They get better because <laughs> I'm also going to cast an Arcane Signet. 
Brown wrist to take. I'm paying for Dylan's wrist stick. Sean, you can draw though, so you each will end up getting a card. That's <laughs> it though. I'm passing after that. End step, I'm gonna cast a Noxious Revival paying two life, targeting my Underworld Breach. Uh, that sucks. Wrist stick. You can draw. Son of a B. Reach on top. Go to my turn. And to lose one from Mana Vault. Upkeep. Odds take damage. One, two, three from Mana Crypt. Draw this card. I'm gonna see what happens when I pay two life going to ten. I'm probing Cameron. I'm gonna pay for one with Ristic floating one with the Mana Crypt. Do you want me and Sean to just look away? I guess so. Yeah, you guys just look away. Cameron, what do you got? I have this card, this card, this card, this card, and this card. Yep, I got it. I'll draw a card. See how, Cameron, you feel about this i think you will not mind it because it does more to them than you but three mana here one of it from the spire which is going to make green and that'll be black he's the colorless here cast calling ritual i will not pay for a study you can draw i mean this is pretty devastating for sean <laughs> massively devastating over here. This sucks. Yep. <laughs> I just spent my whole turn to point out these fucking rocks. I know, that is a bummer, but I'm getting rid of his Kinnon and his Thrasios. Is all his mana too. Let, let it happen. I'm gonna let it happen. So this is pretty interesting, right? Because this calling ritual, Cameron, you are very incentivized to let it resolve because it doesn't destroy much of yours and it really destroys my other opponents. But casting this card means that you can no longer cast your Pact of Negation because you won't have the mana to pay for it on your upkeep. So letting this resolve means that you are only down to technically one piece of counter magic. If I counter it, I'm gonna be down to one piece of interaction anyway, right? So at least this way, I'm still at parity for no matter what happens, but everyone else's board is gonna get destroyed. I am not a fan of you getting the amount of mana that you are about to get here. I am a big fan. Two for me, I'm actually losing my Wishclaw Talisman, which is kind of funny, but so three for me. Six for me. Two here. Wow, 13 mana, six of it green, seven of it black. Cast a Chromox. Ristic. I will use one of the green mana to pick for it. Pitching Wheel of Fortune. There's a okay. red black. Cast Underworld Breach. Ristic. Pay for it. Okay, I guess I guess you'll make me do it. Uh, Force Negation, Exiling, Snap. Ristic. Good call. I can't pay for anything. I know. I have a dispel. Risk yeah, the dispel. I think it is still correct to pay for it. Dispel, okay? Yep. Underworld breach, okay. Regrettably. Good here. Wow. Let's start things off with abrupt decay on that Rhystic Study, exiling these three cards. Rhystic Study. Pay for it. Ah, okay, it's six got him. Let's use two of this black mana for a Cabal Ritual, which is turned on, so make five more and go up to six. I'll use two black mana to cast a Wishclaw Talisman. I'm, sh I'm, ass I'm assuming that everyone's passing since the Breach has resolved by now. I would imagine yeah. would be, that would be the thing, so. Yeah. Just show us how you win. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when I said Let's I'm not with... F6'd earlier, I totally meant that I'm F6'd. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll activate it, put two counters, I will give it to Cameron and I'll go search my library. I'm gonna cast a Lion's Eye Diamond. Classic. I'll cast a Jeweled Lotus. Oh, now that's just being ridiculous. Yeah, are you gonna cast a Black Lotus then too? <laughs> Use one black, one green, and cast a Tainted Pact. Hold priority, I'll pop the Lion's Eye Diamond for three blue, discarding Besagey. Tainted Pact is good, I will start exiling. Wow, that's great, Brain Freeze. Wow, Put a Brain Freeze like gonna in my hand. <laughs> wow. Two man <laughs> card. Brain Freeze myself, Storm is nine. Sounds one. good. Veil of Summer that I will cast from the graveyard for a little bit of extra protection, exiling one, two, three cards. Cast the LED, get rid of one, two, three. Black here. Cast Tainted Pact, exiling one, two, three. And let's look for Oracle. There it is. Exile these cards. Cast Thassa's Oracle from hand. If Thassa's Oracle is okay, I'll hold priority and cast Tainted Pact out of my graveyard. Exiling these three cards. Eww. He did it. Exiled the, the rest of my whole library. That's the Oracle Trigger. Nicely yeah. done. I was really hoping my wheel was not going to help you out, but that was obviously <laughs> not accurate. Boy, am I glad that Holebreaker didn't show up in that game, though. <laughs> yeah, really. Being on the play is definitely a huge favor in CDH. I think maybe even more than and being able to be the first one to wheel and the first one to untap is really great. Agreed. Thank you so much for watching. If you'd like to support us directly, you can do so on Patreon, like our $50 our patrons, Swampy McGee, Peter Larson, Angelo Corsi, Baby Jeebus, and Mario Hernandez. Thanks, y'all. Check out 
our Fun. bonfire store for all of our awesome t-shirt and sweatshirt designs. If you want to pick up any of the cards you saw today, you can do so at our TCG Player affiliate link down below. Our Alter Sleeps affiliate link gets you 5% off of your order there, so check that out. If you want to pick up any of our playmats, you can do so at our website, playtowinmtg.com. Thank you all so much for watching. We'll see you all next time. Should we talk about why we're in a different place than normal? Uh, I don't know. I think they'll understand. You, you get, I'm on vacation. That's why we're in a different spot. That's it. What are your thoughts on the Hole Breacher ban? Um, you know, I'm, I'm a little bummed, but it's totally fine. You use Hole Breacher a lot in Kenrith, I feel like. I had so many wins off of Hole Breacher, and like it ended up being one of the more easily assembled go-to lines that you could you know, find yourself getting into in mid-range decks. So I am a little bit sad to see it go, but I I, I kind of understand. Banning Hellbreacher on power level, I don't really think makes sense because there are obviously more powerful cards than Hellbreacher, but I do 100% understand why they banned it um, because this is a casual format and Hellbreacher can lead to some miserable games if you are not prepared to play with it and interact with it. Right, because like when you're in the casual setting, you Hellbreacher everybody and then you don't win the game. It's like Armageddon. You just put the game to a halt and you probably don't actually do anything. But in CDH, you're almost always winning the game within a couple of moments. So it's really like Hullbreacher is just the end. It's no big deal. It's just as strong, if not weaker, than Thassa's Oracle and Dockside Extortionist and Ad Nauseam. There's all these other cards that are just like better. But 100% understand it. I'm, I understand why it's Hullbreacher and not any of the other ones either. Hullbreacher is miles better than Notion Thief, Narset, any of the ones that do similar things. Hullbreacher is just like on a completely different level in every way imaginable the mana cost, the what it actually does. Like, it's just so, I understand it completely. It's just kind of a bummer for competitive because I think it was like a fine, healthy option in competitive.